Welcome back. It's a new episode of Sketching Up, episode 116. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. We are brought to you by Schnabel Studios, and we are ready to keep going. It is Chris. It is Matt. Matt, how are you? How are you doing? How is it going? It's going great, man. I'm happy to be back. Um, I saw you just, uh, was that, a month ago? In person. About, yeah, right. Finally. October? Finally, I was thinking like that was the first time we saw each other in person since I think we worked together. It's got it's got to be close to that, right? I, did we did we not see each other like a year or two after that at a game? I thought like yes, a no, we of went, went Alex, like our friend Alex from uh, the internship. We all went yeah. to a game together. We met each other there. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. what I thought. But like so my memory's then, not that bad. Yes, but since since then it's it's been. It, it's, it's probably almost been 10 years, then. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably almost 10. It's funny because you, you, you weren't the only person that I haven't seen in 10 years that I saw on that trip. So it's, it's <laughs> yeah. interesting. I just, I'm reconnecting. Yeah. And it was fun because we got to go to the film festival, which was awesome. We, yep. we can go into that in, in another pod because I think that's a, that's a really cool. I think we should have like Julius on or Dimitri and talk yeah. about that whole experience because that was a lot of fun. Um, but it was just good to see you, man. I got to show you my place. You, you saw my background in person. I saw it in person. I yes. met the animals. I saw the place. I even, well, I, I even had my own oasis there for a little bit while you guys went to see a film and I did work, <laughs> which is the usual these days. Yep. Just, yeah. <laughs> me yep. working is, yep. is definitely usual that goes on. So I stayed back and did some work, but that was a lot of fun. Actually, as of recording, it'll be a month tomorrow. So not people that are listening, the month has already passed. Yeah. But as of recording, a month tomorrow that that, that happened. Because wow. yeah. That month yeah, went month really fast. Flew by. <laughs> it flew by. But man, that was a lot. That, again, traveling a lot, working a lot. I traveled up there for the festival, back to Dallas for two shoots, back up to New York for a wedding back down i'm getting off a stint of five straight video shoots i'm going to arizona this weekend leaving today as of listening and uh we'll be back for recording of the next episode next week and then it's thanksgiving we'll have to do well, a thanksgiving theme i think uh, well i think you you brushed over the most impressive part of all of this is that i don't think our listeners know that you went on your own and you have your own business. It's true. Now. That's true. The sketching and I think up that's listeners the coolest do not know that. Thing. I think that's yes. the coolest thing out of all that. And we can't skip over that part. Yeah. So the sketching up listeners don't know. The the mad props listeners, there was a whole episode. I literally I, let me tell you, let's tell a little story. When when I first made this decision, I got my microphone, my audio recorder, and I lay I was at my parents' house in New York. And I literally laid on my bed with a microphone. It was an audio only. And I basically just went through, I'm leaving my job. I'm starting my own. And this is why. And I did. I, I just, I went all into detail. So there is a mad props you can find with that. That's out there. But yes, Schnabel Studios LLC, who, who produces this episode, will be producing all these episodes, will be the social media platform. You're going to want to follow Schnabel Studios on Instagram. Facebook, TikTok, which we'll, I got to get into the TikTok in a second too. X, LinkedIn, all that stuff. That, that's a, an actual business now. It like makes money and stuff. It's very strange. Right now, not a lot of it, but it does make money. <laughs> it makes money. <laughs> and that's that's the point. And congratulations. I, I told Thank you that you. before. Yes. I'm very proud of you. I'm very Thank happy you. for you. And you do such great work. It, it was about Thank time. You. It was about time. It was about time. It was about time. I mean, you really do need to follow the Schnabel Studios on TikTok because we were talking right before off air. Like your lacrosse was just clean. Your video yeah. the lacrosse. Was that it? With tournament? True Lacrosse. It was, it was with so one of our clients is named True Lacrosse Dallas, and it was with them at a tournament in Round Rock, which is by Austin, Texas. Uh, because so, it was the kid the, the kid made a move and I was like I couldn't the do shiver. That I could did the shiver. And then he he made he he scored and then he just did the shiver. And the then shiver. I was like I was like that that goalie needs to just walk off that field and go yeah. I'm done with this sport for the rest of my life. Well the, the funniest <laughs> thing is cuz it's the internet it's so negative, right? And someone said like 
weak shot or something like that. And I did the asterisk, like, you mean weak goal? <laughs> like, I didn't change the weak part. Whatever. You want to make fun of it. Get it right. It was a yeah, goal. You got it. It was a right. score. It he was a goal. Was, no, they're, 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 they're a great client. We really enjoy them. And we have a bunch of clients like that and doing a lot of fun stuff. But I'm glad that we can get back on the podcast. But mm-hmm. speaking of the TikTok as well, it's really popping off. Ever since we started as a business, it's really been popping off. It started, we had 62 followers. If anybody looked at our TikTok while sketching up was before, we had less than that probably. Yeah. We're almost at 1,400 followers. It's been like a month and a half that we started this TikTok journey. (laughs) So like we're really building, we're really going. But Matt, it's great for us. Yeah. Because when our clips go on there, instead of having 62 people to try to find this, we got over a thousand people to start, you know? So it's just going to push everything further. So it's very exciting. Even though off air, we were talking about social media and getting social media famous and uh, things like that and the ways you could do it. And we had some strong opinions. It just, to me, it's like, I understand. And you said it the best. It's like, they just found that right video that went out and got viral and but for me it's like that's great like all all to you that you did that but then just making the same dumb thing that you that just hit the right note over and over again just does not hold my attention and i don't know under i don't understand why it holds the attention of so many people that they just keep becoming these megalomaniac stars and they're like on Jimmy Fallon. Well, I think it's, I think calling them a star is a little overboard and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to diss anybody that has a lot of Instagram or Facebook or not Facebook, Instagram or TikTok followers or anything like that. But okay. Boomer. No, but like, think of it. They're a star in their own right. I can name somebody that has 600,000 followers to a million followers to you right now. And you, may not know who they are. And you could do the same to me. You could say this person has 6 million followers. and I may not even know who the hell it is. Right. Like we have, and I like him a lot. I, he he is a big, I'm a big fan. He's a friend of the show. He's been on Mad Props, Ryan Kelly. He does comedy. He got huge on TikTok in like 2019, 2020 ish. He has like seven, 8 million followers. Do you even know who that is? Have you ever seen a video? Maybe you know who it is because he's been on a podcast, but do you, do you know who Ryan Kelly is outside of me telling you he's been on Mad Props? Have you? Are you asking me that question? Yes, I'm asking you, you asking specifically. No, I'm okay. asking you specifically. Okay. I do know who Ryan Kelly is. When you said that his TikTok has popped up on mine because I think I'm uh, that side listen. of TikTok. Well, no, I think I'm on that <laughs> side of TikTok because of, of comedy. I like comedic TikToks. I but like, he doesn't do co- he doesn't do the co- the comedian stuff. He does like yeah. skits and other things. Like yeah, that. but they're f- comedic skits. They are comedic. Yeah. Well, so yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But you you there yeah you can put it under any umbrella you want of comedy. He could be he he's sure. also a comedy writer, Chris. So <laughs> um, so but I have seen him on, and I, I'm pretty sure I follow him. I don't. I, I should check, but I don't even know I if we follow watch. him, but we should because he's yeah, been on our show. Like <laughs> he's been on our show, so we should show. Does him he some like love. cartoons and comics? He does. I, I will tell you right now. So in the journey of Mad Props, there's been some guests that have been really good. There have been some guests that have been really bad. When Ryan Kelly was booked, he was actually booked when I had producers, and mm. I didn't book him. My producer did. And I didn't know who he was. He had, he had, I think he had 3 million or 2 million followers at this point on TikTok and, you know, whatever on Instagram, which by the way, for anybody that's wondering, everyone in social media knows this apparently. And now I do too, because of a job I worked. If you see somebody on Instagram that has hundreds of thousands of millions of followers, that means they're super famous on a different platform. Not many that people that are, that are internet famous get famous on Instagram. It, you, they always have more followers somewhere else. It's yeah, that makes it sense. Goes. Yeah, that makes sense. Goes. Yeah. Um, but I had no idea who he was. And he is really, he was a pleasure to talk to. He's an awesome guy. He's a huge Dan Cummins fan. Okay. Who, you know who Dan Cummins is? Yep. He, Dan Cummins went to Gonzaga. Oh, so he I was actually someone we were trying to get on our podcast originally. And what he, what he told us is like, I saw come in from Gonzaga and I really wanted to join because like, I'm a huge Dan Cummins fan. So like four or five episodes later, we got Dan Cummins to come on. And I actually invited Ryan. I was like, yo, Ryan, I want you to join this link. We're going to be 
we're gonna be interviewing Dan Cummins. And I mean, we can't put you on, but if you want to like stick around and you guys can chat, maybe you can link up. Like, I don't know what can happen after you can just talk to him. If you're a huge fan of him, like, right. you know, I want you to introduce yourself to him. And we've done that many times. And there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff from mad props. People don't see, like we've had other guests come on for guests they love because like we had them on and we just want to give back because they gave us time and, and we try to be nice to them. It happens a lot more than you may think, uh, than you may even know. Cause we don't promote it or anything, you know, and we have, someone joined when Darren Nefsey comes on because they love Star vs. the Forces of Evil and always wanted to meet her. And right, we put her right. on for that call. We put them on for that call so they can, you know, talk to somebody they really idolize. We do that. We used to do that stuff all the time. We still try to do it, but, you know, got to get some more guests before. And, and Mad Props is also coming back. It's just That's just a short plug, but Mad Props is also coming back. We're building up our guest list right now. Exactly. But I want to quickly go back to social media before we we jump topics here because I was getting to a point off air. We don't have to talk about exactly what we talked off air because the yeah. point I didn't even get to the point yet. Yeah. We were talking about videos and you didn't understand them, what you were just talking about. And I was saying that the toughest thing about internet videos to me is that there are some really, really good ones out there. I just saw one the other day and I, I think I sent it to our sketching up group of, um, what what was uh what was his name? I can't even think of his name now. Did I send the one? It was like the classic summer, or the classic teen movie thing. And, oh, Leonardo uh, da Vinci. It's Leonardo da Vinci and like a teen rom com or not teen a rom com movie. So like they're in class and like the the bully knocks the papers out of his. Oh hand. yeah, yeah. yeah I followed the, them the on, on Instagram. Picks yeah. them up. The cute girl picks it up and it's like, did you draw these? It's like the Mona Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just so good. And and they're my, one of my favorite all time. I I think it's TikTok, but I saw it on Instagram. My favorite all time Instagrams is there's this one of this guy and uh, like one of the, like a firefighter calls him chief and he goes, I think he's, I think I think I'm the chief of the fire department. And then this girl runs up, are you the chief of the fire department? My house is on fire. And he like becomes the chief. And it's just like, that's, it's almost like vine type stuff where it's just really short skits, or yeah, they're, they're yeah. skits, but they're really good. But the problem with, with Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff is you have to go through hours and hours of stupid brain rot videos yeah. to find those hidden gems. And then to me, it's just not even worth it. Like I scroll for like a second and I don't find anything. I'm like, whatever. And you can follow these creators, but they're not post some posts every day. They post every other day. There's one called Se seven second movies, which is really, really good. And it's just a, a very cinematic, usually pretty funny film that gets done in seven seconds, but it's just so tough to sit there and watch. Like you're saying this person doing the same dance or the same gimmick and you know, something that just is so dumb and it, it really is brain rot. It's just, you're sitting yeah, there I, I like away watching it. The, the one that you were talking about is by cool guys. Um, yes. They the, do that. The first one I was talking about, right? Yeah. Now, the, the first one. one the second and they one. do, yeah. they do that one. And, and I followed them for a while because they're hilarious. Um, and then there's another one and I couldn't find it right off the bat, but they do just so many funny skits. Like there is a guy, like they did one where it, it's, it, 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 his sign he has a booth outside he has sunglasses on and there's like looks like uh water cups from like when you would be running a marathon and yeah. it just says it goes it, on the sign it just says yay it's friday and and the guy was running down the block and he sees he's like oh can i have one he goes yeah take it thank god it's friday and he shows and he spits out he's like is this vodka he goes yeah it's friday <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, he's like, he's like, you can't be doing this. You need a liquor license. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm, the kids down the street were just doing it with the lemonade. I can do this here. Stop blowing up my business, man. And there's a kid on the side of the street. He's like, did you give that kid some vodka? And there's just a little boy stumbling around. He's like, yeah, he was excited. It was Friday. So why shouldn't he have it? There, there's a really good channel. And I sent you this a while ago. You may not remember. It's called Cheese Parade TV. Do you okay. know Cheese Parade TV? Yeah, yeah. So I sent you the video, and it's um, the, the skit's called Cops That Don't Know About Graveyards. <laughs> have you seen that one or no? No, I haven't. And it's like – You have to send that to it's me. It's like, Captain, you're going to have to take a look at this. And he goes, 
another dead body perfectly preserved and marked with a <laughs> marked with a stone over top and then he's like you guys are gonna gonna want to look at this and they go around a bush and the guy like spits out his coffee and they do a drones drone zoom out of like a graveyard and it's all the stones all over the place <laughs> it's just so funny it's so good and they're like next week on cops that don't know about graveyards <laughs> This guy, this guy is over 200 years old. And he's like, you're telling me the son of a bitch is immortal? <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> it's so good. So I, I'll have to send that to you. But that's Cheese Parade. Have that's you, the name of that. Channel. Have you ever followed also Adam Rose? He's Adam really Rose, funny. He's the one that does the um, – like he'll do like the jobs where he'll like look into the camera and then like something silly will happen in the background. Yeah. Right? Like, like there are videos people have posted. Like he's like yeah, yeah, first yeah. day at the gym and it's all the stupid gym videos. That he's yes, and he's I like, know who that is. It's, yeah. It's very good. That, that one, that those are so simply good and funny. Yeah. Like you don't need to be so insane on these. And people replicate those like, like crazy. That's how you know they're good. So while you're going to follow Schnabel studios, be sure to follow all these <laughs> as yeah, well. <laughs> you have to and send them to us because we like this stuff as well. And because but. they're just funny, and I gotta find this this one. It's got to be here. You look into that one. I want to get us into our main topic, which is um, one I'm really excited to talk about because it's one I thought about in like months ago, but we haven't had a sketching up in forever. So I'm very excited to talk about this. Um, our main topic, are video game movies overtaking superhero movies? So I'll give a brief a brief synopsis of what we're trying to talk about here. And then we're just going to go into breaking down, talking back and forth and stuff like that. So what we're talking about is how the superhero movies are just not raking in the box office like they used to. You, you got the Deadpool and Wolverines of the world, the Spider-Man No Way Homes. But in between that, you're getting DC movies flopping. You're getting Marvel movies flopping. You're getting a lot of different avenues that aren't working out. But on the flip side, Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Mario, The Last of Us, like these, these movies and shows are really blowing up Hollywood. And we're going to try to think about why this is, if we really believe it, like do we believe this is actually a thing, why this may be, and all that fun stuff. So first thing I got to ask you because it's the thing that everyone talks about with superhero movies and the reason everyone says that they're going downhill. Is there just – is are these movies actually overtaking or is there just so much superhero fatigue that people are like, I, I just – I'll watch anything else and this is just something I'm familiar with? Well, I think I think it is, it is definitely a little bit fatigue, but I also – I think it's a little bit too much of predictability. And the predictability to me was, you know, um, a lot of these shows that like Marvel was putting out, you could kind of call what was, was going on really, really quickly. Like Agatha, the new show, which yes. I did like, I enjoyed, I too. but I knew what was going to happen at the end. Like there was nothing that wasn't going to tell me in spoiler alert that like the kid she was with was Wiccan, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch's son. Like there yeah. was nothing that spoilers. Yeah. Like, but it, it's at this point it was like, it was so obvious and I thought the acting was great. I thought, you know, the visuals were great. It was fun to watch during, you know, Halloween season. That was that was the best part that they they did the right thing by releasing it during Halloween season. So I was into that mode of like witches and wanting to watch something like that. But I just kind of was like, I called this like it was fun, but it's predictable. It, it's just way no too predictable. To and I think it's just in my mind, there's like two different fatigues for our, us superhero fans. It is Marvel's fatigue because they've just pumped so much stuff out. Like it was just so much overtime. And I think Kevin Feige finally figured out like we can't do that anymore. Like that was horrible. We were kind of trying to figure out what was going on and it just didn't work out. And people were just over it. On the DC side, like you said, things were just flopping. And it just wasn't good. And so I think we're in a transition moment with the with the superheroes. But this is a great time for video games to take over. Now, will superhero stuff come back bigger and stronger? Yes. You know, Daredevil Born Again looks amazing. 
I cannot wait for that. You know, there's the the Spider Man um, animated show, freshman year, freshman year, right? Looks great. Yeah, looks great. That's coming out. The Penguin TV show was monumentally amazing, and I think DC did it the right way. Where yes, it is connected to the Batman. You didn't need to watch the Batman one. And you don't need to be into superheroes to watch it because it was a mafia movie and show. Yes. It was it was it was about it was is about gangs, Italian gangs going at it in in Gotham. So like and, you take Gotham out of it, it was pretty much in New York, and you're just watching a, a mafia show. And and that's a big point that definitely needs to be said of that you don't need to watch the Batman first. I think there's superhero fatigue definitely because we've been doing this for over 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. And there's all, first of all, Marvel, you could say whatever you want about these heroes. And a lot of people are like, you know, this is one of my favorites, blah, blah, blah. They're throwing out the D team at this point. Like there's no more A team guys. And we've had this conversation on sketching up. The Avengers weren't even the A team of Marvel. The A team of Marvel, they couldn't even use because they didn't have the rights to the A team of Marvel. (laughs) So they couldn't even use them. But the connectivity, I think that's actually Marvel's fatigue completely other than – and I'll get more into what I was just talking about. But everyone goes into a movie. So like we watch a lot of this stuff. I personally – you know you know me. I haven't seen The Penguin yet. But uh, as we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. I've been on shoots. I've been on a shoot literally every single day for like the last mm-hmm. month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen the whole thing of the penguin yet. I do know that it's really good. I do know that it's not connected. I do know it's like it's it could be a trans a trans uh, transcending moment in comic book movies and TV, which is great. I love that. I love that about it. But th- if you're a casual fan that only goes to see a Marvel movie, you know, when it's a hero you like or something like that. You know, you go to see this movie and you had to have seen the movies and the shows and all this stuff before it. You're going to be like, eh, do I really even need to go see this? Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to know anything going into it. I don't want to go look everything up. I don't want to go watch 10 movies. Like, why am I going to do this to myself? And I think that's the key for Marvel with the fatigue. DC's fatigue is that they tried so hard to catch up to Marvel so fast. Oh, and they yeah. just never put out a consistently good product. Yeah. And when they found stuff that worked, they didn't know how to come back and reuse it. And yeah. I think that was their big problem. I think the, the, also their big problem was, in my opinion, DC Comics. Look at all of them that I have behind here. They are not happy comics. Like, these are not happy comics. They're and dark. They're very dark. And they were comparing them to – they were putting them these dark movies out when there were such uplifting Marvel movies coming out yeah. where – you don't need to do that. Put one out one year and then put, don't try to, unless it's Superman, honestly, don't try to. Which they didn't try to do. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even try with Superman. They did yeah. one or two and that was it. Yeah. And so, and even, even like Zack Schneider's Man of Steel was not an uplifting real super Superman movie. It was more down to earth type movie. Man of Steel was was like really heart wrenching at the end. So like they were trying to put that all out while these like happy, funny Marvel movies were coming out. And and people were like, oh, that didn't really hit as as hard. But I mean Man of Steel was very successful, but then they kept going with that dark tone and and I think at the time where DC was, they were just like, no, we have to be like Marvel. Like you got to make and, it happy. And then we got the we we got the not Snyder verse Justice League, yeah. and that was the dumbest it thing I've terrible. ever seen in my life. It was the the Josh Whedon, and, yeah, you know, and it was just like this campy superhero tough. team. It was up. really tough. But but on top of what you're saying, I think the biggest mistake DC made is that they tried to catch up to Marvel in the way where Marvel had a story kind of kind of figured out, right? Like we knew we were leading the Thanos. We, yeah. we knew that since the beginning. We knew they were leading to the Avengers story, which was eventually leading to Thanos. And I feel like DC tried to do the same thing, but they sped up the process and didn't have the next story in line. Obviously, the yep. most successful thing about Marvel is they had the entire 10 years blocked. Like you knew all the movies coming out for 10 years 
in 2008, 9, 10, whenever they did that first huge announcement. Like we knew what was coming. And Marvel's fumbling the bag on it now because they're trying to do the same thing where they're like, oh, 10 years down the road, we're leading to this. But one, they can't keep their characters out of, you know, they can't keep their characters out of law enforcement. Yeah. They can't keep their characters interesting. And they're using the C, D, and E team. Like, I don't want to see Young Avengers. I personally, and I've said, I've said this many times on this podcast, I would have rather them just started from scratch with a whole new story. Whole new cast. I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I love a lot of these people. Scratch everybody. Whole new cast. Honestly, bring them back for all I care. Whole new story. And it's a new, a whole new thing. New Captain America, new well, Iron Man, new everything. And it's a different story. Like, just like a comic. Like, the comics don't all connect. Why do the movies have to? I think also uh, uh, what you just said with, like, Tom Holland – and he's talked about this. It's like, I think they're burnt out from play, playing these characters. Yeah. Like, Although he I has announced he's coming back. For he's coming back for Spider-Man. four. Yeah. But I think he's burnt out. I think a lot of these characters were burnt out. And like these actors playing these characters were like, yeah, we need to finish this at some point. Because prior to that, they were doing it for the uh, the Infinity Saga was what, 10 years 10 years. That's 10 years of playing the same same guy. And it's yeah. just like actors are not just one character. They're, they want to they want to play dramatic but roles. They want to get out there. Think about think about this when you when you say that. You get Tom Holland, who who, who you could say Spider-Man was his big role, right? I think he had a role before that, but that's really what put him into the limelight, right? A lot of these actors they're bringing in already have pretty decent resumes. The when when the Avengers started, I'm not saying none of them had decent resumes. Like there were obviously some really strong resumes in there. The guy that led the charge was a guy that Hollywood gave up on. Robert yeah. Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. gave up on him completely. And that's who you anchored it around. Like if you're anchoring around these young, blossoming people, like Robert Downey Jr. was not young and blossoming. He had a whole ass career before this. Yeah. Now you're taking these young blossoming people and you're trying to say, we want you here for 10 years. We want you to anchor this franchise. And they're like, but that's not what I want to do. Like, I want to, you know, go do drama. I want to do comedy. I want to do animation. I want to do all these different things. Robert Downey Jr. wasn't thinking that. And he did other things, right? He did, um, he did, he did a couple of Disney movies in, in between there and a couple other things in between there. He didn't do much in between yeah. Iron Man because he was making – Well, when he finished Iron Man, he million. went and did Oppenheimer, did Oppenheimer. and then yeah. won an Oscar. An Oscar. <laughs> exactly. But, but he was able to commit for 10 years because nobody even wanted anything to do with him before that. It was very controversial when he was, when he was picked up as Iron Man. Yeah. Very controversial. So anyway – no, That's I a big agree. Thing we got to remember too. I, I, like yeah. just, they're they're trying to get these young guys to do this, where they stick around forever, and they don't want to do it. But also, who wants to play Shang Chi for ten years? Like, yeah, no, no nobody one wants does. to do it. But unfortunately, these franchises. Th- the difference between this too, and if you think back to when franchises before the Marvel franchise, and, D- and I won't even say DC, I'll say like Marvel and stuff like that. And after is you would play in a franchise and you wanted to get into a franchise, right? You wanted to get into it. You knew there's going to be movies. You wanted to be that person. You would get into these franchises because you were guaranteed X amount of movies. You're guaranteed X amount of money. You're it's, it's something you want to get into, but it would be maybe like a six year span. They would film number one. They'd film number two. They'd film number three. Think of back to the future, right? They filmed the first one. They filmed the second one. They filmed the third one back to back to back. That's going back pretty far, right? 1985. But even if you're going further on, they filmed them back to back to back. The Spider-Man trilogy, maybe not back to back to back, but very close in proximity. First yeah, one they were very close. Last one came out in what, 2008? Yeah. Like it's very close in proximity. I think the even only bigger, the biggest break between years, those was Spider-Man 2 and two 3. To three. Yeah, yeah, 2 to 3. 2 came out like two years after, after the first one did. And then yeah. the second one was like four years after. So it's like a six year span. So you're, you're not committing so much time to it. Like that is still a lot of time to one character, but it gives you the opportunity to do other things. It gives you the opportunity to, to break in. Like you want to be that franchise guy so you can make a name for yourself and then break out into other roles. But if you're committing yeah. to one thing at 22 for 10 years, you're getting out at 32 years old. Yeah. It's you know, insane. It's, it's, it's and, not and it's not new. all because, you know, I can see you. And I think one of the best, actors to characters 
next to Robert Downey Jr. was Chris Evans as Captain America. I think so too. In, in my opinion, so like he, what, he is Captain America. He is Steve Rogers in my mind. Yeah. Like he did such a great job with that character. I think so that too. character was he. He really dug into the source material of Steve Rogers, and I respect him for that. Like that is he so made a great. Boy Scout a badass. Yeah, That's... and and before that, he was just doing like rom coms and you know not another teen movie and stuff like that. And he His wanted biggest to role out. was probably Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah. and or not so another like teen movie, one of those two definitely. And I can see him wanting to, and I think he was the other one that was like once like after Avenger Endgame and Cap was like done, he was like, I don't think I'm coming back. I like, he didn't sound like he wanted to come back as Cap. Same with Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson had like a resume, like next to Robert Downey Jr. I feel yeah. like, cause Scarlett was in like everything. She was, but except she, was she wasn't good. done in Hollywood. She was very big in Hollywood. When yeah. She, she was when she good. Up. And I think she was like, once they, killed her off she was like yeah I'm, I'm done with this character now it's like i want to go do other things and when i think about it and then we go to chris hemsworth who i think is signed he signed a new contract like he's going to play thor yeah, again he's, he's going he wants to play thor forever like he's yeah. he loves that character. he loves that character and and i think the first thor movie he played thor really well and then in the in like in the avenger movies and he played Thor very well. And then when we got to like Ragnarok and uh, Love, and what was Thunder. It? Love and Thunder, it was obviously the director who like pointed like him to Taika really, uh, Waititi really took some liberties. Really took some liberties there. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, oh man. But you can see what I'm trying to get at is like all these guys put their hearts and souls into these characters mm -hmm. where DC. We never got the time for them to do that. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, like and that's and that's what you're getting done. into. And I think the biggest fumble that DC did, even if it's it's a mirror, if they were trying to mirror it, was not doing what they did with Thanos with Darkseid. Because Darkseid, in my opinion, is a hundred times more terrifying. Yeah. He is a hundred I mean, times more terrifying. Forget Dark Side. There's there's a thousand characters in Marvel that are more terrifying than Thanos, but they still made him to be this universal threat. Yeah. Like that's how well of a job they did in building it up. It's all about the build up, right? Yeah. Look at the thing we were gonna talk about within the Tyson versus Paul. It was like the build up's huge. We all thought it was gonna huge. be great. It was disappointing, but it's all about the buildup, and that's. I wouldn't say fans. disappointing because I got to see Tyson double cheeked up on a Saturday night. And I am <laughs> Dude, that was so crazy. happy about okay. that. I <laughs> I, I, I let's take the small away. detour. Let's make let, let's take the small detour because because we were going to talk about this, but then we talked about other things. Very small detour. Okay, very small detour. Very small. First of all, that was hilarious. That was, that, was all, great. that was a six-year-old man not giving a fuck. I, I don't know if any person working that Netflix thing ever worked a live broadcast in their life. I was talking about that with my boss the other day. I was like, there had to be someone on the button who's an intern who had it no was idea. It so bad. It was so bad. The buffering was crazy. The buffering was unbelievably bad. The crashing was crazy. The the broadcasters, um, what was his name? Ar Ariel Hawani was pretty good, and there was one other person that was pretty good. The rest, of, like, why why was Cedric the Entertainer even there? Like, why was cool. Rosie Perez one why of the? Why was Rosie? Well, this is I, I, Cedric the Entertainer. I get why. I will tell you why, but I also say why. Cedric the Entertainer was very big and friends with Mike Tyson. Rosie Perez is from the same the same block in Brooklyn as Mike yep. Tyson. That doesn't mean they should be analyzing this fight. <laughs> like, Not at all. It doesn't mean at all that they should be analyzing Cedric this the fight. Cedric the Entertainer no did look like he was running a Kenyan uh, scam artist. Like what his it, outfit. What his it, name? What's his name said? It looks like he's wearing a thimble, and I, I almost died laughing. <laughs> you wearing a thimble on your head. I almost died laughing. People but, are like he's like a, an African a scam artist emailing he him and showing like him a picture and saying, he like <laughs> I lost was, all my money. <laughs> The the fight itself, I think it went exactly how you would have anyone would have thought it would. Like nobody thought Mike Tyson should have won that. He's sixty years old, and like 
Jake Paul is literally more than half his age because half his age is 29 and Jake Paul is 27. Yeah. <laughs> like it's more than half his age. The um, thing is with this one is the only thing is one. Jake Paul's a marketing genius. Yeah, he's like, very mar- he's very smart marketing genius. Like you can hate him, you can you can despise him, you can love him, but he is a marketing genius. He did a very good job on this. Two, good for him for he held back in that fight. You could if you watch those so, things, he was going he could he literally said he did too. Yes, he, he could have he he after the second round because Tyson had all this energy in the first and second round and if and we were all saying it, if he didn't get a knockout then it wasn't going to happen and you just see him slow down and His there were a couple were times oh he had no legs he he had a no 60 legs. year old's legs yeah. he looked like my dad walking around they cut to him at the end of the third in the corner and i said to mary I was like he looks like a 60 year old right now like he yeah. looks like he's 60 years but, old but but he but the quickness of jake paul he could have really dropped him like yeah. he may have not been knocked out but he never punched him enough that he was going to fall down no, and and he said on his podcast, and he said in the post game interview, like they said, did you hold back? And in the post game interview, he said yes, he held back. And then in the and then on his podcast, he was like, he saw that he had the opportunity to do it, but he was in the ring with Mike Tyson, who he idolized growing up. His dad idolized him growing up, and the guy's a legend. And he wouldn't want him to go out just this twenty seven year old beating the absolute snot out of him and knocking him out <laughs> unconscious. And you know what the worst part is? And this is how, because people hate Jake Paul and, and no. there's plenty of reasons to, right? There's plenty yeah. of reasons to, I think he's an idiot. I don't have, I don't hate him. I don't hate him either, but I just I don't entertain him? him. I don't, I don't, enjoy, I don't enjoy him, but like, I don't have any reason to physically hate this guy. Yeah. Like he does some really screwed up and awful things. But anyway, I, I a lot of people hated that he was like well, you shouldn't have held back you should have knocked him out blah 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 I'm like th- first of all they're friends like th- go look at the, anything before they announce this fight they hang out they call yeah. they call him I- Uncle Mike like he they're friends they're actual friends and then on top of that he he idolizes this guy Mike Tyson didn't have to get in the ring with them he the guy that he idolized his dad literally idolized growing up decided yes i will get in a ring with you and fight with you like to, to be able to hold back and like show him respect and be like well this is might be his last fight ever i'm not gonna knock him out like he's not gonna be knocked out for the last fight the last mike tyson fight we ever see will not be a knockout yeah. like I, I don't care if people hate him you can hate him you can hate everything he does you can hate his guts just be real with yourself like that's he's showing respect for a legend. It wasn't a real thing. Like I get it was a sanctioned fight, whatever. It wasn't a real thing. No one in the world was like, Mike Tyson's going to knock him out in the first round. They were wearing pillows on their hands. They didn't have real gloves. No, there two was, minute, was like ra- two 14 minute ounce rounds, gloves. eight rounds. Like no one was knocking anybody out. We all knew it was just going to go eight rounds for entertainment purposes. And the real purpose of the whole thing was the fight before it. Because a- another thing with Jake Paul is he likes to promote female, the female athletes yes. and that was the whole and that was the best it. fight that was the best fight that was the best fight he got he got the two best fighters he could put them in the card before because everyone's going to start tuning in during that fight right and yep. they, now they're going to be introduced to these people so yeah i just whatever think you want it, I, it's it, one of those things where you know it's it's also one of those things we're going to start putting this content onto streaming we're going to we forget pay-per-view. Yeah. We're leaving the pay-per-view space. We're leaving that now. If you yeah. already do that, we're going on. And I think that segues into what we're talking about with superheroes is that we are now changing into, okay, superheroes are great. They're going to still come out. Nothing's stopping that from coming out. But we're now seeing a new, a new great kind of origin, which is video game content which yeah. is i think video game and i'm not a huge video gamer you are but i do the games that i have played have been cinematic games where i'm like i want these to Legend be of like Zelda, full like last and, and of us last of us a, a bioshock bioshock like bioshock to be out there you know um and then we already got two greats with mario and sonic yeah. And well, they, the last of us, I think you could put up there as a, Oh, that oh, was yeah. extremely successful. That was, and, but I think it, it now again, I'm not a huge gamer, 
and I've mm-hmm. played The Last of Us before and I've liked it, it wasn't the first thing to my mind where I was like, oh, I'd like to see that kind of stretched out, like dug into these characters. That's, that's what I mean. They did a great job with it. And then and then it came out and I was like, holy shit, I love this show. Like yeah. this show is is amazing. So let's dive into these video game shows and and movies yeah because i think they they deserve to be talked about now i think they're they're at a too i think i think the the another thing with these shows and movies that you get with the video games that you don't get with superheroes anymore is like we everyone you could say whatever you want like i can go back and watch spider-man one the first toby mcguire one thousand times because you love his origin story you love seeing how he became yeah. spider-man but you can't do that with a lot of these characters anymore because you're 10 15 years down the road like seeing the mario origin story it it, sh- it was entertaining like i love the mario movie it's something i could watch a thousand million times like i know not a lot of people are like that they're like it was good wasn't great i'm not saying it's the greatest movie of all time but as a person that loves super mario when you say I'm a gamer, that's what I play. I'm playing Brothership right now, Mario and Luigi Brothership that just came out. Like, okay. I love Mario. That is my number one. And to see even their adaptation of it, because it's clear, it's not the a real adaptation, right? It's not the whatever the books say or anything like that. It's their adaptation of it. I just think they did a great job with it. And it, they built it into a world that you can now expand upon. They showed there's other worlds on the map in the very beginning. Like, there's going to be other places to go. I also think with this video game, um, the animated ones especially, let's just stick with animated for a second. I think going off of what you're talking about, how like Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, they all want to get out of this character. When you get a character like Mario, when you get a character like Sonic, when you get a character, take any of them, right? Take someone from Inside Out, someone Mm -hmm. from any of these movies. When you get that character, your career is a lock. You're a lock once they become successful because you know they're going to run that IP into the ground. Look at what Shrek did for like Mike Myers, who who even has heard of anything of Mike Myers in 20 years other than Shrek. Now it's on Broadway. It's on Broadway. He's getting check after check after check. Eddie Murphy, who's one of the greatest comedians of all time, has some of the funniest movies ever out there. When he did Shrek, he wasn't really doing – he was at the end, the tail end of the – you know, that's when uh, Norbit's coming out and stuff like that. He's at the tail end. But he still is in the limelight all the time making check after check after check because he did Shrek. When you get these animated movies, you can do them forever. You can do them until you're in the grave. You know as long as they're successful, they're going to do them until they're in, you're in the grave. Even Shrek is coming out with a new one after, what, eight years, seven, mm-hmm. eight years since the last one? Yes, they are. coming out with another one because Shrek is just so, so impactful and so important in entertainment. So I, I mean, think another reason that you're seeing this transformation into this is because they want you to play these characters for 10 years. I could play Mario for 50 years. It takes, you know, it takes a three hour film session in, in a, in a studio. Like I could sit, I could do it right here if I wanted to kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You don't need to actually even be in a studio. You can, you can have it at your house. You'd be like, all right, honey, I'm going out back. I'm going to record my voice lines for Mario. I mean, yeah. Chris Pratt's a bajillionaire. He can yeah. have a whole studio in his backyard, do the entire movie in his backyard, and, and go home that night. But like, also, that crazy. gives them the the as these voice actors, that gives them the uh, like. Take Chris Pratt; he could be doing Netflix movies yes, at the exactly. same time exactly as he's doing the Mario. And I think he was doing a Netflix movie while he was doing Mario. That's exactly what I'm trying. Like to he say was there. filming it and then yes. doing it, and and yes. that's. That's that's like that's the dream. Now remember, while well, you weren't even you weren't even a, a sparkle in the show's eye yet when when we first announced the Mario movie. It was announced in 2020, I want to say. Yeah, probably. And, and it was one of our first episodes and we talked about it. And that's how long production has been on it. Right? It's been since 2020 and it came out last year, right? 2023. Yeah. So 3 years since announcing that means it's probably six years of production but you could do other projects while you do this that's what i mean you could do it for the rest of your life like you could do all these other movies in any part of the world like i can go to to australia to film a movie and also play yoshi at the same time all you have to do is find a local recording studio that's it that's all you have to do and it's you're golden 
So I, that's why it's another reason I think these movies are overtaking because you can, you can make them, they don't have to be the greatest movies of all time, but they don't have to be, they're not usually awful. Sometimes they are right. Sometimes they're really bad, mm -hmm. but they, they're usually right there in the middle. You can pack it with stars, absolutely yep. pack it with stars. And so like, oh, I want to see Jack Black as Bowser, or I want to see this guy as this person. So you could be anywhere in the world. This, this person could do it for the rest of their life because they could do it from their house. I think that's another reason you're starting to see it. Because if you really think about it, they're all animated because we're talking about Mario, Sonic, you know, all these things that are. Well, Sonic's a, a little of both. It's a little of both. It's a little of both. Yeah. But Sonic himself. But what's is... his name who, who voices Sonic doesn't have to be. Like Idris Elba, I know, does Knuckles. He doesn't need to be there for Knuckles. He doesn't need to be there. Yes. Yes. You're right. You're right. So I but, just – but I think going off of that is another good thing, which I know we're going verse superhero stuff. Yeah. But a very good idea that James Gunn had for the DC Universe was combining animated shows – and the movies like they all work within the same universe like creature commandos which comes out i think in like two weeks mm -hmm. is what bridges peacemaker one and peacemaker season two and it's animated creature commandos is completely but, animated but do they fall into the trap then of you have to see this to see that no so that's the thing you don't need to know anything about peacemaker but you need to know about that show to see the next Peacemaker. No, it's just it, – it's kind of like Penguin. Penguin is a show that you don't need to see Batman and you don't need to see Batman Part 2. It's just there in that same universe. It's like a filler for people that yeah. are waiting for the next one. Yeah. Gotcha. And I think gotcha. that's what – that's the success. Like it doesn't need to really – be the next connecting thing. It's its own story. It's its own thing. It's about a type of suicide squad that is bringing different characters from the DC universe that are from years ago. Like they are, they're, they're like their name creature commandos. Half of these guys are dead technically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it just brings that whole thing together, which I really like, but when I'm thinking about Creature Commandos and I see what's coming up in there, like the next animated show that deals with video games is Secret Level. Have you heard about Secret Level? I don't know. Can you explain it a little bit? It's Amazon, Amazon Prime. Yep, that's about it's, right. It's all animated. And okay. each each episode is a different video game. It's a story from That's those. interesting. So I'm sure get, they're all going to be. Let, let me let me take a guess before you say it. They're all going to be older video games, I imagine, mm -hmm. se semi older. They're going to be video games that are not major IPs, but ones you would know. Yeah. And they're not. They're going to be ones that you couldn't build a whole world off of, but you could definitely build a story off of. You can. I e. Let's see. Let me give an example. Give me one. Give me one video game, and then I'll see if I can fill in the rest. Uh, Mega Man. I was gonna say, you know, Meg. Uh, actually, Mega Man was gonna be the first one. I was gonna say Pac Man. Then I was Pac gonna say like, Mega them. Man. Um, th those side scroller games. Maybe even though there might even be what the hell is the one where you're jumping over the the alligators could be in there. Um, Frogger. Older, no, 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 not Frogger. Is Frogger in there? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's a tough one. No, I can't remember what the name of that game is. But I, I, that makes sense. That's a, that's a great idea. And it's animated, so you go in so many directions. But the best part about it is, you know, Pac-Man pops off. Guess what? Now you make that into its own show or its own movie. Well, I think that's so. what they want to do with Mega Man. Is I think that's the next one that they really want to hit on. Mega Man has to be a show. And yeah, so like they want to see how good this episode does. I bet okay. you they're all Namco. Because Namco is well, no, because one Namco of the episodes is, is one of the episodes is just called PlayStation. Oh, okay. And it's it's about the original PlayStation games. Mm. Would you watch a Would you watch a GTA show if it was on like HBO? 
Yeah, it'd have to be on HBO. <laughs> no, I know it'd have to be on HBO. That's that's not the point. Well, it could be on it could be on Prime. Like it, it could be on, it could be on a lot of things, but it's yeah. an HBO show. Would you watch a GTA? Let's just say San Andreas. Would you watch GTA San Andreas on HBO as a ten episode miniseries? Um, I don't know. It feel like well, yeah, probably because it'd be like on the opposite side of like The Wire. <laughs> like <Yeah. you're, laughs> that'd be interesting to watch. Would you? Let's see. Let's try to think of. And another thing with that is you can go from like one to the next to the next. You know what I mean? Like you could do G- GTA one, GTA two, GTA three, GTA four, GTA five, and eventually GTA six if it ever. Well, comes it's out. it's interesting because well, is this animated or is this live action? That's a good question. That's a good question. Because I could see it being live. I asked that question because we have all these video game shows coming out, and I enjoyed it. I know people didn't, and I don't think it was on the right um, streaming service, but Paramount Plus had the Halo show. Yeah, I know. A lot of people didn't like that. I didn't I didn't play Halo, so I wasn't like I played super it. into it. I enjoyed it because it just dove deeper into things. It just moved too slow. Like yeah. it was just one of those things where we know the story. If you're a Halo fan, you know the story. Like I understand why you wanna you wanna humanize like Master Chief and everything. You wanna get into his story, but it just spanned it too long in the first season. And then it, it like took up like two episodes in the second season and then it got canceled. And we yeah. were like at the end of the second season, we were getting into like what we played, like what what really is happening. So and that's it, another it's hard. thing. That's another thing with the video game shows and movies over the, the, the comic books, because the comic books, you, they can, you know, they always have a little bit of Hollywood magic with some of it, but they try to follow a storyline very closely with video games. If you're trying to make something with Mario, take your choice, right? You got 64, you got sunshine, you got galaxy, you got, like I'm saying, I'm playing this one brothership right now. You got all these Mario Kart, Mario all the sports. You have so many different directions you can go. It really gives you as a, as a storyteller, like I, I could take them in any direction because it's believable that in all these directions, you could see Mario going based on my already had knowledge. Mm-hmm. But when you go into a comic book, sometimes a comic movie, I should say, based on your already had knowledge when something happens and you're like, Oh, that's not even close. Like you kind of get frustrated, right? You're like, I already know the story. I don't like the, I don't like the direction they've gone. I really love the direction the comic book went in. I don't like the direction they're going in here with these, with these video games, especially these kid friendly ones, Mario, Sonic, even Mega Man can fit into this. They go in so many different directions because you're trying to sell so many games, but you could see this character in these different directions. And I think that's another thing that helps these, these movies and really pushes these movies because these, these writers can come in and kind of make it their own a little bit while still holding on and grasping to what made people love them in the first place. Yeah. An example in the Mario movie is the, the whole situation that goes in is very different, right? Like, for example, Peach is very independent, which if you've played a Mario game, <laughs> she's not independent. No. There's two of them ever that she's independent, two. Like, she's not an independent character, but she is in the movie. But you're not like you know, unless you're whatever, you're not really, you're not upset about it because you're learning Mario becoming this, this key figure in the mushroom kingdom. And they were able to take the liberties with that. And I just don't think you could do that as much in comic books. The only way you could do it is with like the, the F level character and nobody cares, right? We care about Mario. We care about Sonic. We care about Donkey Kong. We care about the people in the last of us. You care about the characters in halo. Like you care about these characters no, I don't care about whoever the F level guy that's going to be part of Secret Avengers. Like, I, it yeah. doesn't matter to me. Like in the comics, that's great, but as a movie, I don't care. I don't care about building their story. You know, that's yeah. that's really how I feel. On that. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting, but I think Halo was tough because, like, I think it would have the same thing if they did like a Call of Duty type show. Where it, they – well, I think Call of Duty could be a little better because of kind of like – you can get like a kind of Black Hawk Down type feel to it, like a Zero Dark Thirty where yeah. they're infiltrating things. But they could go the way that Halo did where they're just 
deep diving into things that we just don't really care about. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of that. There were a lot of extra characters in the first season that we like just did not care yeah. about. And yeah. like you're saying, these F characters, like the one big one that I know is that he was a space pirate, but he was a Spartan, which is what Master Chief is. They're, yeah. they're Spartans. They're, they're the elite fighting force for the, the human race. And like, I was like, I don't really care about this guy. I understand that him and Master Chief grew up together, but that's all I needed to know. But we went into a deep dive of him being a pirate. and Got to fill the episodes. And it was, and it was like, you Gotta didn't need to do episodes. that with so much of the source material. Yeah. You and know, that's, there's a lot of fluff in, especially the superhero ones, man. The fluff episodes are, are ridiculous. Oh, you know? They're so Thinking of Moon bad. Knight, thinking of... Um, thinking of um i can't even think of them off the top of my head right now but i i truly think i don't know if we've seen the end of superhero movies mm -mm. i think with the, the the resurgence of dc you know we're gonna see it still but could the video game movies overtake i think they can i think i think we've gone in such a different direction if you know the legend of zelda for example is not animated that's gonna be a live action i'm a little worried about that but i mean i'm sure you know they're gonna put it they, they can't go too far from the source because people will get really upset but it's another one there's so many different directions you can go with the legend of zelda and so many different worlds you can explore that there's so much you could do with that character i think self i think like the big thing that i'm excited for in the video game world is in secret levels there is an episode warhammer 4000 and I've watched a lot of the clips from the game itself. I've never played the game, but I've thought the the lore to it is insane. There's like books yeah, the written lore about is crazy. it. Well, it's you get crazy. to create your own, right? With yeah. Warhammer. And so, but the the one thing is, is that right now with Amazon, um, Henry Cavill, who's a huge like he plays Warhammer, he's trying to do a live action show of it. And so, I think they're testing. Like, do people, will people really like this? And I think he voices someone in that episode. Like, when, uh, these, these people, like, there's Arnold Schwarzenegger's in this. Keanu Reeves is in this. Well, like, we, we just said that, right? Pack it with big names. You can pack, pack it, yeah. it with huge they have, names. They have so When is many. that releasing? Uh, let's see. And it's Where's... on Amazon for anybody yeah, it's on that's Amazon. listening. Uh, let's see where it is. December 10th is the December first December 10th on Amazon. So we'll have to come back and talk about that when we get there. Yeah, but we have to. It's, it's definitely I think it's going to be something we really need to watch. And, and I just got to say, okay. I'm glad we're back on the mic and we're back here with Sketching Up. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Sketching Up. Remember to follow us at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, uh, X slash Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. You can find every episode on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcast. You can also look up Sketching Up on Instagram or Facebook if you want to follow us there. You'll see more behind-the-scenes stuff that we do. We do more fun stuff on there. You kind of just see the clips of us on Schnabel And Studios, Twitter. But you can and find X, everything else. I mean, and, and X. And X. I always I forget tweet about that. I always forget about it. Tweet a lot on there. There's so much going on there. I just forget about it. You know, <laughs> so we know we there. may have to go to that new one that's coming out. Blue it's Sky. A, I, can, Blue I can get you on there. I've been on Blue Sky for two years. I have not done anything on it, but I have been on it. <laughs> I get out of here. Uh, well, get out of here. We well, no, no, no. To be fair, to be fair, when I was doing <laughs> social media, I wanted to make sure I had one of everything mm -hmm. and you had to be like on the first list. So when it was first coming out, I got on the, the wait list. So I've been on, you can look, I've been on there for two years, but I don't have a single thing. I probably have no followers, nothing. I just have an account. I have to, I have to check Sky. it out. I got to check it out. But you have to be invited. Day. You have to be invited to Blue Sky. That's well, the I point. obviously so I can invite you. know someone Maybe. now. So. Yeah, but wow. who says Maybe. I invite you? Who Maybe. says I invite you? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is, this is quite eye opening. Okay. So you can and follow I, me on I Blue accepted Sky. this guy. Blue in Sky this dot chris schnabel.com i believe it is. i, I accepted this man into my house into your house and he doesn't now even he know his his, his hand he doesn't even i can't even hand. get i can't even get you a blue sky account what kind of friend am i what kind of guy is this 
anyway, um, you can follow me on Blue Sky because I'm on there. I probably won't follow back because I haven't even opened. The, I haven't even opened the app since I joined, so I probably won't even follow you back. Maybe I should though, because everybody's moving there. But you can follow us on X as well, and you can get into the conversation on any of those platforms. Please get into the conversation. Let us know what you think. Do you think superhero movies are being overtaken by video game movies, or do you think they're just a okay? Um, make sure you follow us on those and let us know what you want remember fridays are the new date so get here on fridays to listen we're excited to keep bringing you episodes you're coming back weekly so that should be good there should also be new mad props coming out so make sure you follow schnubble studios on youtube to find those as well and we have a new podcast coming out i'm not going to announce it yet but there's one more coming out very very soon and the only thing i'll say is it has our good friend joe brown on that podcast which i'm very Ooh. excited for i've been trying to get him on a podcast for a long time so matt you got anything go. to close us out with um well after that blue sky debacle i'm kind of over this and i may never show up here again but no i'm That's fair i am very excited to be back and I, i'm just happy that we moved to friday that we're just we're bringing people joy into the weekend into the weekend into the weekend is the best way to do it into that's what i'm trying to do. to do so i guess the, the the decision to come up with for us not for you guys listening for us next week is do we do a thanksgiving episode knowing we're coming out on friday or do we just no, say we do no 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 Black we do, Friday. We do a Black Friday. That's what I was gonna say. That's Black what we Friday. need to do is stories a Black from Black Friday. Story from Black Friday and your best Black Friday deals that you have gotten. Do my Superman socks with a cape count? Yeah, of course. I they got do. when I was fourteen. Yeah, those count. Those count. I, that's probably not my best deal. I'd have to think about that. So I'll, I'll think about that and we'll come think back. With it. It. But we'll come back. thank everybody for joining. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast.